can't live without a woman. Tell me, can you? I would never hurt a woman. Stop the violence against women. We need to love our women and take it. Neka Ezani. I'm a lawyer by profession and also a family advisor and a life coach. So my topic today, the acknowledgement. Okay, let me follow protocol. Where is the camera? My husband is not here. Let me acknowledge him too. He's out of town. So you know that his precious wife acknowledged him. Okay. So single and searching, steps to take and pitfalls to avoid. That is our topic. Single and searching, steps to take and pitfalls to avoid. Single and searching. What are we searching for? So those single people that raise their hands, what are you searching for? Are you searching? Are you searching? You're not searching. Okay, they are, you're waiting. Okay, you, okay, so you're not single. You have been engaged already. So you're not single. Men are waiting. So you as a woman, you cannot search for a man. So if you see a man that you feel is your spec, you will sit and cross your leg and be praying he comes your way. And if he doesn't, you just let him go. And before you know it, maybe you're 50. We are talking about the 21st century woman. You don't sit down and wait anymore. You do not sit down and wait for the man to come and search for you. We do come to your door and knock on your door to open the door for you. You have to be out there. If you're not out there, then how does he see you in the first place? Single and searching, what are we searching for? I'm asking a question. I need answers. A suitable partner. Yes? A husband? Companion? Yes? Confident? A lover? Friend? Father? Beautiful. We are all looking for a life partner, isn't it? All these things you said now can be categorized under a life partner. Life partner. Do we have to have life partners now? Life partner, because you said friend, lover, that partner side of me. You have a friend that is your partner. Then for life, till then you pass. Isn't it? Marriages are lasting how long now? Three months. Three weeks. Six months. So what happened to the life partner? What happened? It's, dead. it's, dead. Eh? it's not there. It's no, not something happened. It's an obsolete term. Because truly, what we want is a life partner. Isn't it? We want a life partner that, yes, yeah, nobody wants to. You gave a wonderful story. And it's also, I was happy when, you mentioned, when she mentioned that sort of pressure. Do you understand? Some people have pressure because, oh, it's come to that time. You are 25 years old, what are you still waiting for? In fact, when I was your, maybe the mother, when I was your age, I'd already had three, three of you. you. You've not even brought any man to say that uh, he wants to marry me. We have to get it right from the beginning. Because God gave an injunction. What God has joined together, let no man put us on that. For life. Do you think God made a mistake when he said that? Probably he does not see that in this day and age that things will happen and then that injunction will be wrong. But God never lies. His word is truth and it lasts from ages to ages. So what is happening is that we ourselves are not doing things the proper way. We are not taking the proper steps. The society we say is breaking up. There is dysfunction in the society. Who makes up the society? Or the family, isn't it? It's the family that makes up the society. And the family that makes up, who makes up the marriage? The husband and the wife, isn't it? But the quality of the man and the woman who come up to form that marriage, I think you mentioned that too. 
if the quality of the man and the woman are not are, then there is chaos in that marriage. There will be dysfunction. And what will happen is that we will have a dysfunctional society. So we are seeing all these things happening. People are taking drugs. People are abusing drugs. Husbands are killing their wives. Children are killing their parents. What is happening? It's from the family. So if those I love what she said. If the man or the woman don't take time to pick out who their spouse is going to be, then there's no way it will work. So we've already said a contract partner or life partner. I think we've already mentioned that. So what do women want? We've already mentioned that too. And what do the men want? Okay, the men are here. What do the men want really? I did a survey and it's interesting what the survey was. I did a survey on this topic so that I'm more enlightened on what people generally want when they are looking for a life partner. So for the men, what do you want in a woman? We have men here. Emeka, can you help us? <laughs> so, personal, I like the new sophisticated and conservative. Yeah, that's me. So that's very nice. Where is George? George is not here. I would have loved to hear his opinion. Uh, <laughs> yes, it's possible. Yes. Now you're sophisticated. So, um, we have sophisticated women here. Doesn't mean that they are out there. What is sophistication? What what do you what's your perception of what sophistication is? Elegant, beautiful, Jonathan, conservative. Uh, uh, you said conservative. I am elegant. I would say that. I'm beautiful. I would say that. But I'm not out there. Do you understand? I'm not out there in the in the conservative. Why? Why I mean like? You are on social media, you are slaying, everybody has to see that you maybe. Do you understand? That is, Emeka, did I get you right? That is it, yeah? Do you understand? Sorry? Your attitude, yes. Yes. No, no, no. I no, definitely, you have to improve on yourself. All of us were out here, isn't it? So it's not what he means, it's that you know your limits to how far you can go in presenting yourself to the world. You understand? So the next slide, please. So first of all, what do you have to do when you're single and searching? So you're looking for that spouse. You have to evaluate your life. Last year when I was here, I talked about woman build your brand. And what that simply means is that you have to know who you are. As a person, what are your visions? What is your mission? What are your goals? What is your outlook to life? What do you want from your life? You have been placed there for a reason. So, do you know who you are? Are you happy? Are you happy? Because if it's that, oh, I'm single and searching for someone to make me happy, even if you find that person, you will not still make you happy. You have to first of all be happy by yourself. Because if you are waiting for somebody to make you happy, you will never be happy. So, evaluate your life. Are you ready to commit to a relationship? What are you bringing to the table? What will you say you are bringing to the table? So that relationship you want to start, what are you going to bring to that relationship? What value can you say you are bringing to that relationship to build that relationship? This goes for the men too. You have to have something you're bringing. Some women bring their bodies. Sure. If it's their body, this they are fine with your age. She said assurance. She's bringing assurance. Okay. Oh. <laughs> the assurance can change, you know. Assurance, assurance can change. What I'm saying is, what are the values? you're bringing to the table to that relationship you have to have values that you're bringing you can't just come into a relationship and expect things to happen to you there should be a contribution whereby the man says yes she's adding value to my life <laughs> it is not the same see let me tell you
you something. Sex does not move men. It doesn't. Because they can have sex with several, they can go to a city and have sex with anybody. It does not move them. For a woman, it will move her because she uses her hand. For a man, it will not. What moves, moves a man during sex is the feelings he has for that woman. If he does not have anything, he just does it and that's it. So if he says your body and the sex that you're giving him, like making him stay in that relationship. Sorry, when the another woman who he sees is the right one, he will leave you without even thinking twice. So don't say that, oh yes, I look fine. Because sometimes you wonder, ah, look at this woman, she's so beautiful. Why is her husband still cheating on her? And you don't understand. You have to know what is the value. You have to think about these things. So develop yourself. Have a vision. This is the next thing. Have a vision. What is your value system? You cannot be expecting an honest man if you're not honest. You cannot be expecting a man who is faithful if you are not faithful. Probably you have three boyfriends. This is the one that binds me. Uh, <laughs> this is the one that pays for my trips abroad. Then this is the one I want when I want to cuddle. Then the other one, I don't know what the other one will be doing. Eh? So you are stringing all these men along. You, and then you expect that the man you want to get to will be faithful to you. So these values, you have to also have these values yourself. So self-grooming is very important. From the men I did this survey with, most of them mentioned that they would love a woman, just like what Emeka said now, sophistication. So most of the men would want, oh yes, yeah, she looks nice. Take care of yourself. It doesn't take so much to take care of yourself. Have good etiquette, your dressing, your dress sense. First impression matters. Do you believe that first impression matters? The, first, the way you're dressed is the way you'll be addressed. So if you go to a wedding and you're wearing something that is fleet to hear, and the, all the back is showing. In fact, there was this occasion, um, was it last year, during the Anambra State election. So one of the candidates, we, we know him, so he wanted to, he had a dinner or something, so to tell us about his ambition, okay, this is what he wants to do. So we went to that um, Federal Palace Hotel, and he went to the dinner. So it's um, respectable people there. Unfortunately for this young lady, Somebody there in the, in the party had invited her, a man. And I was ashamed when she walked into the door. She was wearing, is it cat suit? They call it cat suit. Cat suit, I don't know. Job suit is, no, 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 job suit. This is cat suit, like, like, sandex. You understand? So next to her skin is like skin tight. The whole back was showing. And this is a political dinner. Do you understand? And I didn't understand how she could still walk into the venue with all these people. And she sat and said, I didn't know what the, the one that invited her did not sit with her, went elsewhere and sat. Oh. And this lady, she came, you know, the man came, just spoke, and he, I, I knew he was uncomfortable. And he went elsewhere and sat. And fortunately for the girl, she came and sat there because everybody, you know how you just want to avoid looking at that person? You know, so I just tried, I was like, should I tell her? I said, let me mind my business, so I don't know my, what her reaction will be. I should tell her that she's uncomfortable that you know what you can even leave. But I don't think she even felt embarrassed because she was still there when I left. You understand? But I, I, that's the thing. When you don't have dignity for yourself, when you don't value yourself, because at that moment she didn't even realize that I am out of place here. And so everybody is trying to avoid her. So do you want to be that kind of woman? Or do you want to be that woman that people look at you and say, Yes, ma. And you're looking, ah, I'm still 26 years old. Why are they calling me ma? Do you understand? Not that you're looking old, but you're looking respectable. Do you understand? So the way we speak, there are some words. When I was at the university, I had some time. I had, I had to go to another school. I don't want to mention the school because they have a quite of reputation. And the kind of things the girls there were saying, I cannot even now say the kind of words they were using. That's how the F word, you know, using it so loosely and call it, you see, you have to be refined 
as a woman. Mind what you say. Mind the kind of things you look at. Mind the kind of things you read. These are things that make you, that add value to you. Because you know what? You have dignity for yourself. You have pride in yourself. Even if anybody does not give you that, you know. And it is the way you feel, that is how you'll be treated. But if you make yourself so loose and so low, you'll be treated like trash. Okay? So even the way we talk, even the way we walk, even the way you eat, all these things matter. It adds to your personality. Even the way you sit down, as we are here, you sit down in a composed way. Don't sit down loosely. It has to be composed as a woman. And you know what? Your children look at you and they relate it. You see all these women outside, you don't see them being working anyhow. It doesn't matter. It matters. And the men are watching. So you're wondering why nobody is looking at you. Are you not in the market? That is why they are not looking at you because they don't want that. Hmm? Some people say, ah, nobody is even pricing me not to even talk of dying. <laughs> it's true. Why? You have to look at yourself. Check yourself. Evaluate yourself and see what. Ask yourself what is the problem. Then the next one is, do you need to seek professional help? Because, you know, sometimes it is what has happened to us in the past. It's just like what doctor has even mentioned extensively. What has happened to us in the past that draws us back from meeting the right people? It could be rape. It could have been domestic violence in the home. Maybe the way our parents treated us. If she said words of affirmation, you know when you tell your child, you are going to be great. That child grows up believing that, yes, I am going to be great. But if you keep on telling your children, you may be sick. Who has Ronnie making? I'm speaking, what I'm saying is that you're useless. You cannot do anything right. That child will keep on believing because you are his parent or her parent. Who keep on believing that if my mom is saying that I am useless, maybe I am useless. So these things have emotional baggage, you know, so the child grows up thinking, I am not beautiful. So she eventually believes that she's not beautiful and it's weighing down on her life. So if you need to seek professional help to deal with past thoughts, pains and regrets, then we need to do that. It is important. I am so happy she mentioned it. We all need, even that we all need it, even the married people, we need to do it. So where do we, next slide is, where do we meet people? Okay, so we want to meet this dashing young man. Where can we meet such a man? I'm asking a question. Sorry? Let's watch you then. Clubs and bars. Well, so where do we let the people? Event. I am mentioned now. Clubs and bars. Clubs. Okay, you said church. School. You said club. Church. Nobody wants to agree to me. Club. We can do something in club. Keep us close. Let me tell you something. Keep us close. Yes, you can meet at the mosque. You can meet in the church, you can meet in school, you can meet at social events, you can meet during networking. Even in pregnant like that. Okay, are you single? Are you single? Ah! There are single women here now. So this is a defense where such people can meet up and then, you know, club. Are you saying we can club? Yes. Yes. Depending on the club. Okay, so then you can go to the club. But there is another club I'm talking about. Yes. Yeah. Night club. Yeah. We can be. Okay, what you're saying? Yes, I can say it all your head. Both of you, just under the camera. Both of you, you're watching and why are you covering your face? Both of you, you're watching and saying yes. Yeah. Yeah. We are building our values. 
And the people who want to meet are the people that have the same value system as us. You do not want to meet someone that his value system is less than yours. Because it will work. Three weeks or three months later, everything will pack up. Clubs. Yes. See, if you marry somebody that goes to clubs, because I have a case that I handled one time. The girl was okay with him. Oh, it was even fun because they used to go to the club together. But when they now got married, of course the children started coming in. And she now couldn't join him in going to the club, but he didn't stop him from going. In fact, she never sees him till 2 a.m. in the night every day. Every day, yes. I'm not joking. I'm telling you. Do you understand? Okay, it's not in the following day. So, yeah, this is real life. So you have to have, if you want to socialize, socialize with people that is healthy, you know. Club, yes, she mentioned the going club. They are very well good clubs. See, when you get married, I think you still disagree with you. When you get married, all that bo- 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 you that is not what you want. You left that life. So you need someone that you're looking at the future. You're not looking at what you're still doing when you are 16. Do you understand? So the next slide please. So you meet people where? Where do you meet people? We are very friendly. We find people are so good. You mentioned everything. Sport event. You can go to watch football and meet somebody. And it's good because both of them are now football fans. So this one is not the one that ah, he's Arsenal and you, you want him to come and rub your, your back and he's telling you there's a match. Both of you will sit down there and say, hey, what is happening? You know, so it's very good. Social, okay, social events. That one is supposed to be social events. Yes. Then the parks, shops, cinemas. These are places where you can meet people. And if, if, you know, when we are talking about values, it would be a problem if after your marriage, even when you are 20 years married and you go to the cinema, it does not look strange. But if you are 20 years married, 30 years married, and you are still going to the club, what do you think? Because then you see your children there. Probably you see that is coming and you see your daughter. And if your daughter is saying, ah, daddy, did you come to club today? <laughs> 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 your daughter is on the club. <laughs> 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 so next slide, please. So I'm going to ask a question. You know, we can also meet people by matchmaking. Matchmaking. Do we believe in it? Have you worked for some people? Are they the married that I work for? Yes. It can work. It can work. Matchmaking. So when your mom is saying, ah, come and meet Anthony. Anthony, my friend, son. You know, this is my friend. We went to secondary school together. And I now met her daughter and she had a son and he just came back. You need to come and meet him. And you're like, mommy, I'll leave me a kid. You never know. Anthony could be the one. <laughs> Mommy to tell him to marry. She's not telling you to marry him. Make him fair. Then if he jails, ah, oh well and good. <laughs> you know? So much making is effective. It's very effective. So we should not shy away from me. Even if it's an auntie that is disturbing your life when I go to get my aunt, she tell me, hey, come, 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 this is my life. You must meet him. And if you're still searching, go and meet the man and leave no. We're not telling you to start dating. Do you understand? So get to know this person. Then if this person now matches your value, remember what I said about the value system. Because don't date, see, don't date anybody that his value system is less than yours. If your value system is that of going to club, fine. Maybe it's work for you. But date somebody that your family is telling So that if in the future you are saying something, he understands where you're coming from. So do not marry. Okay, sorry. It's long distance relationship. No, no. 
Dangerous. Is it dangerous? Yes. yes. Is it dangerous? Yes. What is that relationship? Your hand. This is not dangerous. Raise up your hand. It's not dangerous. Can you tell me why? You said my microphone is not. It works. It works because it works for my sister, my love sister. She was abroad. She was here in Nigeria. The band was abroad, and they met through match making, and it worked out. Today she's in the UK with him, and she's doing very fine. And they're gonna have a kid together. They said how many years are they married? They've been married for three years now. They've come to the forty. Forty years and counting. Four years is still small. very visual characters and they are prone to what is around them yes. and close to them. So leaving your, should I say your ministry or your first day space is not a good idea. Some days that relationship, they don't have to be not quick I met my husband uh, four years before I traveled and uh, we dated for like um, Three years I was in the UK, he was here, and I'm married for about 10 years now. You came down, did you marry while you are still there? Okay, you came down. How long did it take from when you came down to when you got married to me? Three months. Okay. Okay, she wants to say the last perspective. Let's hear a gentleman's perspective. Yeah. Personally, I would say any long distance any long distance relationship that is dating exceeds one year. I'm I'm of the group that cannot work. Well for some of us that have been in that show, we knew what happened. Yeah, so even after you come came back, you then started telling you different stories. Things that are gone. And as a man, you test with your emotions. Even if you try to forgive, to forget to be the problem. So at, at some point, even if you decide to go ahead with that marriage, the marriage might not be good. So anything, even one year, I've been. That was the test value system. Okay, so I met my husband in, in university. He was two years ahead of me. So he graduated. The first two years we dated was, he was local. He graduated and for the next four years he lived in Abuja. And we've been married for 14 years. She dated for two years before he traveled. She dated for two years. Captain. It's not Captain Stone. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. When you are FaceTiming, video calling, or talking on the phone, it is that person's representative that you are dealing with. You are not dealing with the actual person. Do you understand what I'm saying? If it's the person's representative, what that person wants you to see? Oh, I missed you. When are you going to come back? Oh, I cannot. No, listen, I understand what you're saying. Long distance can work. For some people, if you're working, it can work. Do you understand? But if you beg, oh, we've been together on the phone for four years, that is, should not be the ground of it. Why would you now marry the person? Do you understand what I'm saying? If you have watched, there are some things, like I said, you will find out when I mention the pitfalls and all that, that will make you understand more. 
but that you're talking on the phone, then by that person's representative, you are dealing with. So we will pass this age just a number because they are telling me to like move faster. Next, next slide, please. So people avoid while searching. Do not be pressured into marriage. So don't say that by your age, oh, I'm at the second age where all my mates are married, that I should marry as well. Remember, the base is why you should get married. Marriage is not something you just walk into. You have to understand what marriage is first. Marriage is a lifetime with this person. It demands commitment. It demands dedication. So you should be careful. So parents, friends, society should not pressure you into marriage. Do not marry for material gain. Somebody mentioned assurance. <laughs> Do not marry for material things. Oh, he provides for me. He pays my school fees. He pays for my apartment. He bought me a car. He gives me monthly allowance. That is not the basis. Sex should not define your relationship. I think I've mentioned that before. Sex should not. Say what sex does is that it clouds your memory or your mind. You're not thinking straight again. So even when you see things that you should avoid, even when you're seeing the red flag, you choose to ignore it because of the sex. It's too <laughs> Do not seek to change the other person. Let me tell you, they will not change if they don't want to change. If they don't want to change, there is nothing you do. Oh, some people say, oh, when we get married, he will change. No. If they don't want to change, they will not change. Then do not ignore red flags you detect in the relationship. Ignorance is not peace when it comes to marriage. You have to be sure and check out for all those things that are deal breakers for you. Once you see them, you go to the next one, be quick to, to quit an abusive relationship. You know some people remain there and say, oh, it's because he loves me, that's why he's beating me. <laughs> yes, it's a matter of, okay, you see, it's because he loves me, that's why he's beating me. It's a problem. So when, when, the, when the man does not scold her, when the, when the man does not um, scold her, you know there are some men that scold their women and talk to them as if they are talking to you. So we move to the next one. So these are red flags to watch out for. So we watch out for liars and manipulators, people that have no ambition, they just don't have any goal. People that are authoritarian, temperamental, they get angry with me. Sit off you financially. You know there are some people that it's your own salary that you are giving him, so they pay you, you transfer it to him. Yes, it happens. It happens. So people that abuse you, you know, physical, emotional and verbal abuse, immaturity, immaturity, you know, so he's insecure, he's deeply jealous, he's envious, lack of, he just doesn't have commitment in the relationship. Then if you feel, you know, that feeling of being used, if you have that feeling of being used, that means there's a problem. Stop substance abuse, so maybe he's an excessive drinker, or he abuses, you know, these new substances they abuse now, tramadol and all protein and all these things. You know, you should be careful. You know, uh, exactly, yeah, yeah, my, my Joanna, these things are common things that people take in their, you know, and you're okay with it because you think the man is tall, dark, and handsome. And then somebody that doesn't know God. Somebody, unless you yourself you don't know God and don't appreciate God, you cannot be with somebody that does not know God. You cannot. Because one thing about somebody that knows God is that before he arms you, remember he has an authority. There is somebody that is above him he respects. So he cannot harm you because of that authority over him. Next, next slide please. We'll soon finish. It's just, it's just one. <laughs> it's just one. Yes. So then the green flag. So these are things you should watch out for. So let's move on to do long distance relationship. If you're very intuitive, you can get these things from, from, from the person. So if you're able to get these things, it's not the exhaustive, exhaustive here, do you understand? So these are the ones I've just brought out. If you see this kind of thing in a man, or even a woman, for the men here, take it too, then it is a go. So somebody that has good formation in character, he respects you. Like from the first day I made, women most of all they say ah they want a man that respects them. They want a man that respects them. 
You know that has self control. A man that has self control will not harm you. Will not demand for sex. Do you understand? These are things because he has self control. It's people that don't have self control that use you. You know that has realistic visions and goals. They place he has perspective where he's going to. He complements your lifestyle. See, he does not complete you. Don't search for a man to complete you because it's only God that can complete you. Look for a man that can complement you already with your lifestyle. You know, so when we look at these things, I put in there well groomed, smart and decent. So some people they'll say, unless he's tall, dark and handsome. He may not be tall. He may not be dark. <laughs> but he may be the part I, okay, ask it a lot. I'm sure she will say glorious things about you. I don't know that one. <laughs> you know? So somebody has responsible friends. It's important. You know, if you're with a guy and his friends are responsible, then it's a goal. Because you are the average of the five people around you, the five closest people around you. You're the average of them. So if your your husband's friends are responsible people, you know that these people will not allow him to behave. Do you understand? So security, okay, I need team spirit. So, so there's no competition in the relationship. You know, so if like what she mentioned earlier, if he's being promoted, he does not if you're being promoted at work and maybe you even earn more than him, he does not see it as a problem. Do you understand? So he's pushing you, he's motivating you to be the best you can be. So and there's different attraction between the both of you. It's okay, you can listen. There's different attraction and you have to be attracted to the man. There's no way that you cannot be attracted to somebody you want to date. At least there should be a decent. Not when it is all just sex. I, 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 you understand why I mean decent attraction? Do we? Yes. yes, there should be a decent attraction. So the dating process. So now you're dating. You've got to this person. You have to follow this process. Be friends with this person. There are some people that are married that are not friends with their spouses. They are just housemates. They are living together. So you have to start now to cultivate that friendship. So if the person is of a different tribe or culture, upbringing, religion, learn about it. There are some people that are from different faiths, but they marry and they get along. So don't be a wife to a boyfriend. You know some people, oh, once they start dating, they move into the man's house. And they start taking care of the man. Like, see, if he gets the milk, why should he pay for the cow? Why should he? So don't be a wife to a boyfriend, don't be controlling. Be warm and friendly to his family and friends. Be real, not fake. Some people pretend, okay, let him just put the ring, then I'll now show myself. It will just blow in your face. If you believe in the relationship, be committed to it. Be committed to that relationship. Even after marriage, it's not just the dating process, even when you are married. Define the relationship as you progress it. Some you just mentioned after one year, if there is not the uncle, what are you waiting for? Some people four years, eight years, you're still doing boyfriend, girlfriend. Please define that relationship. Commit everything to God. See, he's your maker. He's your author. He's the one that designed your life. He knows your path. He knows who it is that will be yours. Commit everything to God so he directs you to who that person will be. And I will end finally. Don't be a woman that needs a man. Rather be a woman that a man needs. Thank you very much.